Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Just as day follows night, for every AliExpress top 10 sale video, there's an AliExpress sale haul triple unboxing video. And you know what? Delivery is definitely getting much, much quicker. I remember when I used to talk about watches being strapped to carrier pigeons and tell you to prepare yourselves for a delivery time of between six and eight weeks, and that is just not the case anymore. I ordered these three watches 10 days ago and here they are all in Sydney ready for me to peel and reveal. Now I went a bit mad at the March sale, which seems appropriate, and I spent over a grand on six watches. This time I reined myself in a bit but I still managed to spend 500 Aussie on three watches, all of which I included in that top 10 selection. What did I buy and are they decent or are they donkeys? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, so I have taken them out of their outer boxes, but I promise you I have not had a sneak peek. I always like to do these videos live. It's fun for me, it's fun for you as well, I hope. Now, I never do wristwatch checks in my videos, but I am gonna do one today because the watch on my wrist is appropriate. It's a Steel Dive 1970. It's the first one I bought a couple of years ago. It is their now infamous 61058110 homage. And when I made that top 10 sale video last month, I said I had bought my third. That's the Addy's Dive there. I'm gonna open that one first. Why did I buy my third version of essentially the same watch? Well, I bought this one because it has a really interesting textured wave dial and it wasn't even all that expensive. $86.72 was the price I paid. I will of course leave links to all three of these in the description of the video. Do bear in mind though that that was during the sale and the sale has now ended. However, it's AliExpress so there will be another sale starting any minute now. And there we go. Looks like we've even got a few stickers to peel off here. Stainless steel bezel, wave dial. Very, very interesting. And there it is. Now I'm okay to admit it, I'm more into that stainless steel bezel than I am the wave pattern dial at this stage anyway. Kind of reminds me of the SPB185, the steel master that I had a couple of years ago. That is really nice. I think that is worth paying a little bit extra. Obviously this one costs more than your standard common or garden steel dive 1970, but it has both of those features to justify the price. I noticed though, it only has the old cheapo clasp. Steel dive have upgraded theirs. Yeah, unbranded as well. That'll be easily swapped out for a silicone, just like the one in the wristwatch check. Let's get this sized and set. Actually, I think that could grow on me. It looks whiter from some angles, kind of champagne-y from others, and then silver to match the bezel insert in between. Yeah, very nice indeed. And these Willard homages are ripe for redials. I'm not saying that I just bought a watch for the dial and then intend to redial it, but yeah, if you've got one of the basic ones and you're not happy with it, then it is perfect for a mod project. Most of these dimensions should be familiar to you, I'm sure. 44 mil in diameter, 13.6 mil thick, but the key dimension with any Willard homage is 47 lug to lug. It's a big watch that wears like a small watch. 20 mil across the lugs, bit of a taper down to 18, back up to 20 and a half at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, 165 grams. Flat sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance, and a Seiko NH35 in the back, which you can actually see because of the screw on stainless steel case back with the Addy's Dive logo in the middle. You can see though how smooth the brushing on the case back is. These are not expensive watches, but these are not poorly made watches. They are very nice on wrist. As I will now demonstrate, they are still fairly large watches though, so do bear that in mind. 165 grams really is the thing that you have to concern yourself with, although swap it out for a NATO strap, rubber strap, whatever you like really, and you're gonna take a chunk of weight off of it. Silver hands on silver dial though, yeah, not so great for legibility overhead, they kind of disappear. Really, you're looking at an angle before the hands become more noticeable. Not the first watch I have observed that with though, and I picked it anyway. And let's have the briefest of looks at this one under my macro lens before we move on to the next watch. Now Addy's Dive reference, the wind across the calm surface of a lake or something like that. They claim it to be waves, almost looks like kind of cracked varnish or skin cells or something. Definitely an organic pattern, definitely one of the most interesting dials I've seen on an AliExpress watch in a while though. And yet, yeah, love that bezel insert. 
all nicely done, nice paint fill too, and the loom on these is usually pretty good. Yeah, okay, I could definitely cope with this one, and for under 100 bucks, you just can't complain too much about these Willard homages, can you? Moving on to watch number two, the Specht und Sonne, or something like that, or at least I presume that's what it is, because it comes in an unbranded box, but the other two were branded, so this one is the odd one out. And this was also the cheapest one, it's $68 and change. It's been a while since I bought anything that cheap on Ali, to be honest. Let's see what I got for my money. Well, I got what I ordered in terms of colour anyway. I ordered the white dial version. I'm clearly going through a silvery white dial phase at the moment. But it's not perhaps what I thought I had ordered in terms of the mechanics of this one. That central hand is ticking once per second. I was under the impression that this was a Seiko movement, but I was under the impression that it was a Mecha Quartz movement, and that doesn't tally up with a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. Let me peel off the stickers and do a little bit more investigating. Okay, what was it I was saying about donkeys? Look, this is nicely finished, far better finished than any all stainless watch should be for $68 and changed. However, I can't quite work out what's going on with the movement. So we're currently set at 10 a.m., that is a 24 hour subdial here. If I pull the crown out, that hand stops moving, suggesting it is a hackable second hand. Indeed, there we are, and if I push it back in, it starts ticking again. Date complication down there at the 4.30. Uh, if I pull the crown out to the first position, there we are, I'm able to set the date, suggesting that that is a 60 minute chrono timer therefore, it says 60 at the top, suggesting that if I push this, what happens? Nothing happens. Neither of these pushers actually do anything. Is there a hand missing? Am I missing something? All right, one more little sticker, let's peel that off. In fairness to Specht and Son, or however you pronounce them, I'm sorry, my German is appalling, they specify Japanese movement. Now, I had a look at the listing when I ordered this one, and somebody had posted a comment and a review saying that it was a Seiko VK movement, so I assumed it was a VK Mecha Quartz. Perhaps Assumption has indeed made an ass of me. Four screws, let me pop this off and let's have a look. Well, we're getting a little closer. It is indeed a Seiko movement. It's a TMI, which is Time Module Incorporated. There's a VD53, not VK53. So it's not from their Mecha Quartz range, which explains why it's only ticking once per second, but it still doesn't explain why it isn't actually working as a chronograph. All right, I'm back and I've worked out what's going on. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Okay. Thank God for Caliber Corner, surely one of the finest resources for watch nerds in the entire internet. They have full details and full specs on these TMI slash Seiko slash Hattori VD53s. Zero dual quartz movement with various different configurations, including the date location. Now this watch has the date at 4.30, suggesting it's a VD53C14. And if you look at these operational instructions for that exact same movement with the date at 4.30, what do you notice down there at the six o'clock? Yes, indeed, you notice a stopwatch second hand. And what do you notice if you look at the Spechtenson? It doesn't have a stopwatch second hand. And yet, if you look over there, that has moved on since I last pressed the buttons. It's a chronograph movement, but they have failed to put three registers on the dial. They have, for reasons best known to themselves, deleted the chronograph second. <laughs> deleted the chronograph second hand sub register that should be on the dial at six o'clock. For fuck's sake, what on earth was <laughs> What on earth were they thinking? They have rendered this chronograph unusable as a chronograph. I've never heard of anything this ridiculous before. And I have reviewed some donkeys in the past. This has got to be up there with the best of them. 
So yeah, uh, 42 mil in diameter, 10.6 mil thick, 47 lug to lug, not applicable lug width, fully integrated bracelet, sized up for me 147 grams, flat sapphire crystal, 50 meters of water resistance from a push pull crown, and a Seiko VD53 chronograph movement. And it actually wears all right if anyone cares by this point. What were they thinking? Did they just decide it looked better with two numerals and two subdials? They were probably right, but did they know that people might actually buy a chronograph expecting to, you know, I don't know, use the chronograph? My God. I mean, this is prime Sunday roast material. If I had known, I probably wouldn't have included it in a triple unboxing and I would have made a specific roast video. Anyway, I probably had $66 worth of laughs out of this one already, and I hope you have too. Specht und Sonne, what on earth are you doing? All right, so I have just about gathered myself again after that one. On to the Labini. I always leave the watch I'm most interested in to last, and I'm most interested in this one today. It features a Hangzhou 5000 micro rotor movement, unless of course it doesn't and they've got it entirely wrong as well. Now I reviewed the Baltic MR001 a couple of weeks ago featuring a Hangzhou 5000 micro rotor movement and I became aware that the movement, Chinese movement, Chinese watches, you can find it much, much cheaper than Baltic sell it for in the back of one of these, at least I hope so. Oops, let's peel off some stickers and find out if that is indeed what I thought I bought in this particular instance. Indeed it is, and thankfully it looks like it passed quality control as well. A reassuring green sticker there, designed to reassure anyway. Now this cost me $201 and a few cents. The Baltics are $600, so this costs exactly a third of the price of one of those. And are you ready? Here we go. That is why I bought it. I said in the Baltic review, some of these Chinese movements look good from afar, but are far from good. This one, the decorations actually still hold it together under my macro lens, which is not something I've always been able to say. That looks pretty cracking for a $200 watch. And it looks okay from the front as well, doesn't it? Ooh, date complication though. Ooh, the Baltic doesn't have a date. And this Lubini, frankly, would look better if it also didn't have a date. But a lovely set of dimensions, 40 mil in diameter, bang on 10 mil, one centimeter thick. The benefit of using a micro rotor is that it is incorporated in the movement, not sticking out the back of the movement, meaning it shaves mils off your watch. 47 lug to lug, 20 between the lugs and 71 grams on the supplied. Yeah, it's one of those ones. Genuine leather in inverted commas, high quality. If they need to try and convince you that it's high quality, it's not high quality. Couple of wrist shots and then we'll get the macro lens out again. That is lovely and it wears really, really nicely. High polished case throughout, slim, comfortable. Yeah, the leather strap, you're probably gonna dump that and put it on anything else that's 20 mil and you have in a similar style in your collection and you'll get an instant upgrade. But that doesn't look or feel like a $200 watch on wrist in the slightest. Bit of a flecto nightmare though, no anti-reflective undercoating. Yeah, no anti-reflective undercoating there at all. So the hands come and go, as do those applied Arabic Breguet style numerals. They are gorgeous though as well, and it's skeletonized hands. Very, very pretty from the front, and very pretty from the back as well. There you go, under macro, it still looks pretty awesome. You know, it's not top level Swiss movement finishing, but then again, it's $200, that is really, really pretty. The Borman that I bought in the last sale had a gorgeous looking movement in it as well. Yeah, this Chinese have really gone up a couple of notches in terms of the standard of finishing of some of their domestic calibers. I can see why this one has been picked up by Micros. Yeah, it looks awesome. So what have we got today then? Well, two diamonds and a donkey. It's not an awful watch. You know, it's as good as anybody can expect a watch to be for $68, given the feature set that it offers. And I guess the chronograph kind of works. It's kind of 28 minutes since I started the timer, but you're only ever gonna be able to time something to the minute-ish. And that's not really the point of a chronograph, is it? I just can't believe that they deleted the third sub-register. 
Leave me a comment, let me know if you would like me to do full reviews of either of these two, or a full roasting of that one. Thanks for making it all the way to the back end of the video. While you're here, why not check out one of my other AliExpress haul triple unboxings? I will see you in the next one.